What's up everybody, it's Igun. Today I'm going to show you guys how to cheese any Xenoblade game. So one of the things you can do is you can go um, to the Xenoblade wiki, you can just google Xenoblade wiki, and then once you're there just type in whatever you're looking for, whether or not it's a quest or an item. Here I'm looking for the love source, so I can go to Xenoblade 2 because that's the game I'm looking for the love source in because these guys are awesome for... Um, 15% party gauge game plus increases trust by 3000 upon use for a duration of an hour. This is really awesome if you want to increase your affinity shards really, really fast and just blow through them. But in order to do this, you have to be able to travel to Tantal and you need the DLC quest pack, um, which it's talking here in this prerequisite. It'll also tell you the ingredients of whatever you're looking up for. And so I can just click on the ingredient and it'll tell me about the ingredient and where I can find it. And you can literally search anything on the xenoblade wiki all the quest characters food items random items that you have to find for specific quests are all literally all over the website so great resource another website we can look at is frontier nav this is more um specific to xenoblade x all right so something super quick i'm going to be covering online tips first and then i'll be covering actual in-game tips so if you want to skip to that the end game stuff, I'll put a time code somewhere on screen. I also won't be covering end game tips for Xenoblade 1 in this video because um, I've already made videos on those, which I'll be showing later in this um, in this video and just kind of doing really quick, dirty explanations. If you want more in-depth stuff, just go ahead and watch those videos. When we get to that point of the video, I'll leave them in cards up top. So here we can see the entire map of Xenoblade X. And what's really neat about this is I can zoom in here and I can click on this and it will tell me it's FN Site 219 and it's a Meranium deposit. I can click here and it's going to tell me that this is this region with there's a treasure segment because um, these different areas require different things like here you need missions on these you need to kill an animal on these it'll tell you you need to kill the Sarskowit? The Sarskewitches? Uh, however in the world you pronounce that. Um, so it's just really a nice way to see the map if you haven't had it explored and find different items. Because sometimes you'll look up something in the game like you need to find an item or you want to grind for something. And it'll be like, oh, find this at FN Site 400. And you're like, where in the world is that? Well, here's FN Site 407. There's 406. 408 and you can click around and you can find them on here. So this is um, a really good resource for Xenoblade X. We can also look um, at this probe layout map. And what's cool about this probe layout map, this is also for Xenoblade X by the way, you'll notice the same map. Um, in Xenoblade X you have probes and these probes can make you uh, money. And so what you can do on this map is test different probe um, combinations to see how much money you'd make and it's a lot faster than testing and trying and running them over and over and over again on the Wii U gamepad because that's an awful disaster. Um, we can also do this kind of little interesting thing where I can just um, select on a region and it'll tell me what collectibles and what monsters are found within or i shouldn't say monsters it just shows all the collectibles that you can get in these regions so that's also really useful all on frontier nav i'll have all of these websites by the way listed down in the link below and then there's obviously also my channel i have a couple of videos up i got one on how to top a lock um getting crafting experience gems and then how to find all the secret areas these three videos are all specific to xenoblade one um, so if you're looking for Xenoblade 1 resources, um, I'll leave all these linked below and on cards up top. Um, but just to kind of quickly go over what I'm going over in these videos, this one I'm talking about topple locking. And if we check out what I'm going to do here, first I'm going to apply a break, then I'm going to apply a topple, and then I'm going to apply another topple, and then I'm going to keep that chain attack going. And you'll see right here this topple gauge. In order to keep an opponent topple locked, you want to keep this topple gauge active and that bar maxed out as long as you can and the best way to do that is just to break topple topple break topple topple break topple topple and if you want a daze lock you can add daze locking in there but that gets a little more complicated but i talk about that in this video if you're interested and then experience gems 
So these are really, really specific because you're going to have to beat these Bagras Nebulas out in the, um, you have to go to the Magna Forest and then you have to go to Waypoint Beacon. That's what it is. Waypoint Beacon is where you have to go to get these. They're like in the 80s, but they're pretty easy to kill. And once you kill these, they have, I believe it's a 15% drop chance on level five experience gems and you can max those out up to 250%. So if you can grab these like really early game or even late game, they're a great way to um, be able to get to level 90 really, really quickly. And then this last little video segment here is just how to find all the um, the hidden areas within Xenoblade, which you're going to have to just watch this video for an explanation on how that works. But if you're looking to 100% the game, there's a couple of these and I'm willing to bet most of you don't have because you have to go way out of your way to get some of them. That's just a couple of kind of online tips. Now let's jump into the games and we'll look at some in-game tips. All right, so we've jumped into Xenoblade 2. Let's look at some really big Xenoblade 2 tips. So one of the really nice things about Xenoblade 2 is you can auto attack cancel doing something called stutter stepping. So the idea of stutter stepping is every time one of your auto attacks lands, um, you're going to flick your stick, your left stick, every single time the auto attack lands. Now this is going to be the first attack within the the set of three that happens in your auto attack we just attack this mammoth here there's one two three so there's three hits within the auto attack cycle now if i flick my stick here every single time an auto attack lands you notice i can attack a lot faster um i need to go kill something that's a little bigger that way i can explain that a little better but as you notice, as I'm hitting that and I'm um, stutter stepping, I'm getting more attacks off per second. And the more auto attacks that hit, the faster your arts recharge, which means the more arts you can use. And arts are super useful in Xenoblade. All right, we found something a little bit bigger to fight. All right, so watch. Flick the stick, flip the stick. That's all there is to it. And the advantage of this is it recharges your arts really quickly. Now, if you're using Mithra, you'll notice I get recover recharge. So I can just become an infinite Beyblade um, and do a lot of damage. So my arts recharge really quickly. So this tip is really great um, early game. Late game, though, when you're a literal powerhouse, it doesn't quite matter as much. Um, but also these dinosaurs are pretty easy if you go fight like the Tyranitan or some of those harder super bosses, you're probably going to want to stutter step. But that stutter stepping, it's super easy. It's not that hard. And it's a great way to do a lot of damage really, really quickly. All right. So now that we've talked about stutter stepping, another good tip in this game, if you're trying to get to level 100, if you're not there yet, if you happen to be a lower level and it's your first time playing through Xenoblade 2, something you can do is you can just go up to these Dinosauros and Tamperantia and just kill all of them. Literally all of them. It, it doesn't matter. And if you kill them all, just go back to um, the beginning and respawn them in. You can fast travel to a point here on the central plane that'll allow you to do that again. And I'm not fighting that well right now because I'm trying to pay attention to what I'm saying. Usually I voice these kind of videos over in post, but I thought it'd be nice to kind of do them um, differently than I usually would where you guys can see my face. But yeah, once you get these dinosaurs, um, down they're pretty easy to fight especially once you're a higher level like i am right now like i'm way overpowered for this like i could literally not pay attention and this thing's gonna be defeated well on its own um but that's a great way to get 100 is just kill a whole bunch of these things over and over and over and over and over again the fighting system in xenoblade 2 is really complex and really really simple all at one time but if you want a more in-depth kind of look at how the fighting system looks in this game, go ahead and just leave it down in a comment below and I'll go ahead and cover it if you guys want to see that kind of video. Um, a video I'm going to make before that probably though is I want to make a video on the Elma Redux fight. For those of you who have done that, you know it's an absolute pain. And for those of you who haven't been able to get Elma because you can't defeat that fight, um, I'm going to be making a tutorial on how to do that. So if you're interested in that, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. All right, so now we've jumped into Xenoblade X. One of the biggest tips I got for Xenoblade X and this is basically just how to cheese Xenoblade X, is once you get your scale, I don't remember what portion of the game it is you get your scale, because I think you get your flight unit in like chapter six, is you can come up onto this mountain here 
um, I believe it's called Mount Magondo. I'll show it up on screen um, where it is. And you can find these tiny little dudes up here that are level 53 and just walk on them. Just just walk on them with your scalp. It'll slowly, um, well, hold on, I actually have to target them first. There we go. So you can target it and then you can just keep running them over until they die. And you'll get a ton of experience from it. Cause when you first get your skill, you're like in your like 20 range ish. So this is a good way to get um, really high levels really, really quickly. Although I can just kill it with my skill cause I'm already max level. But yeah, you can come up in this mountain and just walk over all the tiny little creatures. And that's basically it. All you come up, do is come up to Coldros and, and kill all these guys. Now getting to Coldros is a little difficult when you first get your scale because you don't have a flight module. Um, so you do have to cross the entire ocean. Yes, you can do it. You won't run out of fuel, I promise. You can you can f go all the way to Coldros and start running these guys over. And there's tons of them on this mountain and you'll get a bunch of EXP from it really quickly. Although realistically, the easiest way for me to do it, obviously, is to just walk up to them and use Phoenix wings and just, you know, merc all of them. So that's one way you can do it. So you can just use Phoenix wings if you're later in the game. Um, but yeah, so that's a pretty basic tick for Xenoblade X. And that's all of the like easy cheese tips I have. Like those are the big ones. Cause these games, they're not like, yeah, they take some brain cells, but like it's pretty easy. Xenoblade aims are pretty straightforward. It's just if you want to be a little OP or speed things up, a lot of the tips in this video I showed will make your life a lot easier. If you enjoyed this video, go ahead and leave a like, subscribe, comment, let me know what you want to see next, and thanks for watching.